So uh, let, let's talk about uh, kind of where we are in the uh, real estate business, how, how home sales are going, how um, alternative investments in real estate that are still recession resistant, like multifamily, mm -hmm. uh, self storage, yeah. uh, build to rent. Yep. Uh, we had Jim on last week uh, with his build to rent model. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing, didn't you tell me that somebody, a hedge fund just bought somebody's house for 25% over retail? No, 20%. It's 20% over retail. Hedge funds, if you're living in a big city, hedge funds are buying properties at 20% over the retail. And it's not just one, it's several of them are doing that. Um, and and it, it, go, it goes down a little bit the farther out you go from the larger cities, but mm -hmm. it's... It's a, it's crazy what they're doing. I can't figure it out of how they think they're going to get out of this because they're banking on uh, what they think the economy is going to do and what they think the real estate market is going to do. And it's yeah. so crazy right now. I would be, you know, you know, really nervous about that. Bill, you, you took it from somebody else. And I can't remember who it was, but the, you know, the house doesn't care what it's worth only how much can it pay? That's right. So I think that's the philosophy that a lot of these companies are going into, knowing that giant hedge funds uh, are buying up tens of thousands of rentals and smaller hedge funds are following suit because once enough stock inventory is under control, you can control the rent rates. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, so at that point, it doesn't matter so much that if there's a correction in the market and the valuation goes down, right? Because you're still utilizing the depreciation of the asset and you're still getting cash flow. Even if the appreciation isn't as strong, you still get these two other factors that, and one of them you can control. Yeah. And like said that's still 70, around 75% of the rental single family homes are owned by people who have fewer than 10 units. Uh, is it 75 or 50? I thought it was like 70. Okay. Well, it's going down every day. Yeah. No, I mean, they're... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. And, and we need to be, I, I mean, what is that going to really do to our first time home buyers, the small families, people downsizing, um, you know, in that, what we're calling resist, recession resistant <laughs> market, um, what is it going to do to the people that really buy and, and want to live there? So much of what we have is really turning into rental properties because they're buying, I mean, a huge amount of properties, huge amount. Well, there's, listen, there's still um, opportunity for the owner occupant. They're just mm -hmm. not going to be able to buy it in the, in the hot markets. The hedge funds are going to be targeting properties that are, that don't really need to be rehabbed if they're paying more than retail. Well, even if they're, it doesn't need work, they're doing that. Or if it does need work. It does need work. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, but they're targeting properties that are a certain age. Yeah. Certain age, certain, you know, and then they're going to be in certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to have to do as an owner occupant, uh, go outside of those particular sub markets and maybe buy something a little bit older mm -hmm. uh, that you're going to have to work on. But you, but you, you, but you like, the, the, the way if I can get my words out, what you see happening is the pushing of out and away from the jobs. Yeah. So you have to live further away from potentially the job centers. Sure. Now, if there's more work from home scenarios, that becomes a, a greater reality that, Absolutely. okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But if we start returning back to the office, I mean, that's, that, that creates a burden on people because either pay the rents and don't own, don't own and be happy. Right. Uh, or, right. Or live further out and have a one, two hour commute. Yeah. Like, that's, well, that's a tough choice. You know, some, some of the companies now are requiring that you're vaccinated uh, or you have to work from home. So that's going to make more people work from home. Uh, it's going to have fewer people. What, what concerns me is the uh, commercial real estate space mm. because that's going to be underutilized. We're going to have to redevelop. Yeah. That. Somebody's going to get hurt. Uh, well, <laughs> listen, it, it's not. Every market has people that get hurt. Yeah, that's Every true. market has people that are going to benefit. Yeah. So as things change, you just need to be in the right spot at the right yeah, time. Yeah. So knowing the future 
It's <laughs> the amazing Kresge. You can't look, What's going and, on? You can't look into the future. You can be lucky and um, be ahead of the game, or you can be diverse in your investments. Be, be in um, a group with like-minded people that understand markets in different areas yeah. mm -hmm. and never put yourself in a position where you only have one or two exit strategies. Right. You need to be yep. nimble and be able to change and react to the market. Although you don't want to react to the market. You want to uh, be proactive uh, as much as you can, but there's going to be times where you have to react. Yeah. But yeah. as long as you're in a position where you can turn that ship fairly quickly, um, your, your issues are going to be minimal. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, we both, you know, in, in real estate, we, you know, since the seventies, we have more or less enjoyed constant and consistent appreciation in the market um, that is coupled with inflation. Mm -hmm. And because we've been, you know, forcing inflation since the seventies all along the way. Sure. So at, at what point, does that, I won't use the word bubble because I hate the word bubble, but at what point does that program stop working? And turn into deflation. Yeah. I mean, you brought that up. You listened to, you were talking about Alistair McDonald. Yeah, well, he was at, you know, we talked about him before. And then somebody else said, was talking about deflation to you. No, I was, I was reading a book. Uh, just oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. So he reads. Yeah. yeah. So what was the name of that book again? Do it's uh, The Price of Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's a, it's a, it's a good read. Um, one of the, one of the, I guess the foundation point of the book is we live in a technology or a technological society where we're constantly inv advancing in technology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and technology at its core is a deflationary, uh, like a deflationary instrument, instrument, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it makes you more efficient. Like, you know, cell phones don't cost as much as they used to. Right. You know, you had a cell phone in the nineties. You were one of the, you know, or the early eighties, you were one of the very first. I had a brick phone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but now, you know, so it's a force that keeps, you know, and then it, it also removes certain jobs. Mm -hmm. So technology at its core is a de deflationary force. And at what point does quantitative easing and printing of more money, <laughs> Yeah. Stop working against that force. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the, the core of the book. It's like, at what point does that stop? Yeah. And what does that really do to the economy? Yeah. Cause I mean, in the, and I can't remember the exact dates, but over a span of like 10 or 15 years, the world global economy printed something to the tune of $180 trillion of money. I'm oh, sure that was the U S <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> And in that time, same time frame, it created forty trillion dollars of GDP. Mm. So it took a hundred and eighty <laughs> trillion dollars of printing money of inflation to create forty trillion dollars of GDP. That's going backwards. So that, like, it, at what you know? And if we believe that that things like exacerbate and, and keep moving forward at a faster and faster rate, just like technology does, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. will it take? Three hundred and fifty trillion dollars to create forty trillion of GDP. Right, right. At the same time, it um, through those years, it has lifted up the lifestyle of more people in the lower economic. Hundred percent across the global economy, there are f far less people making under a dollar ninety an hour now. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter about hundred percent. It doesn't, doesn't matter about the amount of money is well, it's what, what it's what worth you're getting it, with it. Well, it's what it's worth. I mean, let, let's face it. Um, you know, back when they first started with the flat screen TVs, cost mm -hmm. you five, six grand mm -hmm. to get a small flat screen TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was getting to the point where they were going to start giving them away in cereal boxes because yeah. they were getting so cheap. Yeah. And that happened with a lot of assets. So mm -hmm. there are certain assets that were going down in price and then certain assets that continued to rise. So yeah. uh, real estate is one of them because they only make so much real estate, right? Sure. God is That's only cool. making so much real estate and the, the real estate that he's currently making is not going to be habitable for a while. No. <laughs> so uh, you still got that supply and demand thing going on. And then with the ability of technology to increase production at lower costs, uh, it allows, uh, 
people all over the, like I said, the economic ladder to be able to afford a, a lot more stuff. Sure. So it depends on where you are in the world for that. Like, no, I get it. like GDP is measured across many different metrics. And in the United States, the largest metric is consumerism. So you're buying consumable goods mm -hmm. makes up almost 70% of what we do. Like, so that's why wages in the U S have to be so high compared to everywhere else because we're consuming all their stuff Yeah, and their wages. Are, so if we want to build more stuff, we actually have to be paid less. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Like, and that, that's, it, it's just economics. Yeah. Or you yeah. just have less people making more money. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like China took the whole, you know, I mean, and everyone talks about it. It's like, in the economic, economically speaking, they were really smart. They're like, we're going to keep wages low, production high, because our GDP is not going to be based on consumerism. It's going to be based on import ex or exports, rather. Yeah. Well, recently, um, given what's going on with China, actually Vietnam has become the more lower cost uh, producer of, of products now. Really? Almost 50% of the um, seaborne production stuff that's being shipped over the United States coming out of Vietnam. Well, I thought oh, it was born in the sea. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, the, the, the shipping uh, on shipping containers are, yeah. is coming from Vietnam, not China. And th they run into the same problem uh, China has with the U.S. is that they've spurred on consumerism in China. Yep. And once you do that, you have to start raising wages. Yeah. And, and when you stuff. raise wages, people, I mean, don't, don't want to pay that much because they want, they like the profit margins and, right. you know, the, the, and again, again, technology is driving those costs down. Right. So, you know, a, a flat screens TV, you can go buy for $300 now. So the moral of the story is to invest in self storage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> everyone around the world needs to yeah. get a, put, store have a place all to put their stuff. next junk because they want to buy new stuff, but they don't <laughs> want to get right. rid of their old stuff. That's right.